and there we go what's up beautiful people how you doing this is pope stock doctor trading we're just about to roll into august 23rd's power hour and i thought i'd join you if you don't mind we're just gonna take a look at the chats right here and i don't know if you guys have been trading all day but we got ourselves a sideways for sure but there's something really crooked about sideways don't you think uh, you know, essentially, we're, we're pretty much close to flat on the day um, from where we were in the morning. But there's nothing sideways about that. This was well discussed as a heck of a swing trading day. So far, we're coming into the power hour and we have to establish where we are. Right now, we are on the, on the higher side of our range. Uh, that we've been trading for the afternoon but if we go ahead zoom on out to the three minute chat you'll see that that range is still pretty much low on the day you know it's it's in that 412 80 range um, seems to be the median spot for it and it's been stuck swinging back and forth all day uh, so when I took a look at the other firm the you know the big four you know the Googles Microsoft's Apple's Amazons and see how they compare right like how do they compare to the spy and the Nasdaq in terms of trading you take a look at Google being up here in the uh, top right and see that that had some of the volatility but it missed out on a lot of it um, the one dip that we see here that we don't see with all of them right so notice how we have every single one of the big boys has something in common right this big dip here that's this dip here this big dip here right and here there's a way you can do this on uh, Weeble if you uh, go to the stop here and you just sync your crosshairs right you'll be able to kind of see every single one see that and all lined up with the same time so you can see um, the thing that was similar with all of them was that Apple Amazon and Google um, had a, that first dip was big and major right and the second one not so much you know referencing the spy and the cues they had the two big dips during the day Microsoft had a big one on the second dip but not so much on the first one where Apple Amazon and Google were a big driver of the first of those two swings so what we're seeing right here and I think is a, is a sort of pattern emerging on um, how you can drive the price of spy um, basically You've got these four, and you can use them to your advantage at any given time based on the flow of traffic and whether or not you want to uh, uh, send those those shares into the dark pool or a lit market uh, based on the trajectory you would like to have. So these type of swings on a day when everyone's expecting a lot of volatility and wanting to scalp is all about taking premiums for market makers, and um, that's what we've had right now. So. Right now, being at 413.12, we have to ask ourselves, what um, sort of range do we really expect to be establishing outside of what we're already in, right? So we just bounced off VWAP at 413, uh, right there. This is that white line right here on VWAP. And it didn't show a lot of strength in breaking on through. Now, we are on the up above, you know, more towards the above or upper band on the NASDAQ on the QQQ. And that's because the Qs are up on the day, 0.25%, whereas the SPY is down 0.07% as of this recording. And uh, we know that's set to change. So, okay, that being the three-minute chat, we want to kind of see where we're at, see what happened during the day with the big boys. And we're going to zoom on into the one-minute chat, try to start establishing an idea of where we might be able to make a little scalp trade. And in the meantime, in terms of news out there, um, not <laughs> not a lot of the the juicy the juicy stuff that we'd like to have is is um, is rolling around in the news. But there is a lot of options, uh, premium buying and trading. And right now, one of the big ones that's trading off its earnings report is Zoom. Take a look here, seeing that Zoom is down 16.23% to $81.64 per share off uh, earnings guidance that was not too positive. So they really cut their full year 2023 um, uh, guidance as a whole. They're having a hard time monetizing um, 
off of the popularity, which is unfortunate. If you think about your company like Zoom, um, they took the world by storm when everybody was locked down and had to stay at their house, and then we were all having to figure out how to, how to Zoom call you. If they had executed that to be a less difficult process, I don't think we'd be in this pl uh, place that we are right now, but I think that um, people really didn't understand um, voice over IP um, in terms of turning that technology into a interface that's very smooth, streamlined, and easy to use. Uh, I think they could have used a lot of work there. To me, it was like just copying an older interface of Skype. And that's my opinion on, on Zoom as a whole. Uh, the financials uh, aren't, you know, quite as horrible as one would think. Now let's take a look here, make sure we're at Q4, Q4, 123. Do, 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 do. Now, did any of these expand to have larger? Not really. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. That net, net income is going to hurt you. That negative 50% net income. What's Q1, Q4? Hmm, that's a little bit strange. Okay, so. It doesn't seem to me like. Here we go. 430. So Weeble still hasn't updated the income statement for that. And that's one of my frustrations about Weeble. Their news section is really, really terrible. Okay, still not finding that trade. I'm, I feel very confident with the levels that we have here. And I want to show you guys something about levels to help you, you know, get a an idea or perspective on that. And of course, if we're in Power Hour right now. So interrupt me anytime for any questions or concerns, anything going on with uh, your trading and... Um, you know, education, therefore, as such, that's uh, priority numero uno. Uh, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, investment right here. And I want to show you something on this spy chart that you might find interesting. And it's a lot. You hear me talk about this a lot. It's volume profiling. And essentially, it's just putting volume instead of these candles underneath. It's putting them on the side so that the volume lines up with a certain price bracket. You can see those brackets right here so you can see how much volume we have in this is the five day chart at the five minute uh, frequency level and look right here seeing this volume profile you can see that is why we're ranging out right here that's why this support zone exists the way it is and this is why uh, we can't seem to break out of this range right now this is for the past five days uh, the largest buying zone um, that we've had. Now, the other zones are up here in the 427s, 426, 428. You can you can see a lot of the people who um, might have been bullish in that particular sector probably got their butts handed to them a little bit here. So we're now going to look at the same thing, but zoom out on the 10-day chart. And you can see really, really that that volume profile that we were um, discussing is the second strongest one previously. It's this one right here up in this this zone, right? And that's for the past 10 days. This was what was really highlighted and established. I mean, they broke down off of that. And now you can see this other level. Like, why did we why did spy hold up right here? It's because we had a volume profile right there. Now we gap down below this one, below this one, and below this one. We just skipped those volume profiles altogether completely, went to this one. This is where yesterday we gapped down and we haven't filled that gap yet. And don't you find that to be incredible that this is where the volume profile is, you know, pretty much the least. It's not the least. These are the least, but the price only barely ever touched there. Um, these are prop volume profiles where it just basically fired up, gapped up, and create. And when it gapped up like that, it created a zone for them to land in, right? So, for example, if tomorrow 
they wanted to go bullish. If we started seeing a really um, bullish recovery from this uh, pullback, you'd see it in this zone, the 420 zone, right? Because that would be them uh, jumping back up to a gap. And that might be one they would pick. They could still go back, just go right back on up to 417 and still kind of rinse and repeat the same thing they just did to us um, for the past two days of trading. Uh, but they don't tend to do that. So now we're seeing that we're building a volume profile that's fairly significant here at the 413.25 level. Um, they really just call it 413. And it looks like that's something that's going to stick pretty solid for the rest of the day at least. Um, when we zoom out to the one month chart, start getting a couple profiles a little lower. Now you can really, really see it here, right? So um, this was essentially a, another major volume zone. We got out of it all the way to here. You can see that big volume profile. That was a lot of sellers right there, right? And that brought us right on back to here, which is a major support slash resistance line. It is. The purgatory between up and down, really, and you 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 look the next closest volume profiles to us on the upside, so 422, when we're here at the one month chart, and then all the way down here at 396. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said it. Uh, do we have too much in the way? Yes. We have this entire range in our way. So we're at the 413s, but we have all the way to 410, 409, 409, 410, 411, 412. This is the support zone right now. So there's going to need to be something to break this down to really see it push too, too much further, right? And we definitely have a little bit more room to the upside in general. Right, today being Tuesday, tomorrow being Wednesday, the first day after T plus two that the options from last week's Friday uh, weekly um, options um, expiration date, uh, we'll be hitting everybody's accounts. So um, it looks like it could be setting us up. We're, we're not really sure. We still have 47 minutes left in the trading day. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and we really need to see this, but we, we know there's not too much in terms of catalysts until Friday that could have a significant impact on us. Not too much in the way of earnings, not too much in the way of economic news. And, you know, this means we're kind of like handing it up to the world of the algorithms and they're going to play this game with us right here. So you want to be careful in the rest of this week um, in terms of trading. You really want to be careful. Uh, it's... I'll probably sound like a broker record in terms of waiting for your pocket aces, but I don't I don't have a problem with that because I want you guys to print every day. That's that's the goal. If we don't achieve our goal, no need to jump off a cliff over. We just get back on the horse the next day, analyze our strategy, think about what we did wrong, then we reverse course and make sure we stick to a strategy that doesn't have those wronginglings included with it. And uh, little by little, you refine, you refine, and you become a trader. You become your own um, sort of trading strategy or algorithm where you, you, you know what you're good at. And you know what your, your zone of, of, um, of watching the stock market where, it really, where you can really strike. You know the areas of the industry that uh, area, it's the sectors of the world that you can really focus on and understand, have a really good idea. I'm not the type of person that ever tells anybody to pick a stock because you like it or because you're bullish on it and i know that's strange and it's against conventional wisdom um, but if you think about it you're creating an emotion for yourself in the trade right so a lot of times you know people will give an advice oh you want to get into trading well first thing you want to do is start thinking about some companies that you really like right and then start thinking about some companies you really don't like now what kind of strategy is that for a day trader when it, it if you really think about it, you're creating a bias immediately with your trade, right? Whereas you sit down and say, oh, I like this stock. If you like it, you want it to go up, right? Do you like it and want it to go down? Generally, no. So by liking it, you have already developed a pattern of bullishness um, that might not be very well deserved at all. It doesn't really have anything based on finance. 
um, or price action or, <laughs> you know, overall economic factors that are really uh, defining your trade. It's just, I like this company, you know, I like AMC because AMC does movies. I dig movies and I had my first date, got my first kiss at a movie theater, you know, like, what does that have to do with analyzing price action, right? Like, I almost think some of the best trades I've seen people make are on um, things they have absolutely no connection to in terms of a company, you know, whether it's uh, bullish or bearish, you know, I, I, I don't care one way or the other about Apple, for example. And so I can trade Apple very cleanly. The only reason I don't really trade Apple directly is because I might as well just trade SPY if I'm trading um, Apple. Uh, but, you know, as an example, if another example for me is I am very comfortable with banks and, and I'll, I'll, I have a really, really good idea of when banks are going to shoot up in the long term. And I have a very good understanding of when, when banks are going to pull back. And so that's my wheelhouse. Uh, you can see here if we're still make sure we're still on fidelity yeah this watch list that we have over to the left here is my finances to short i made this watch list and began it in november of last year knowing what we were coming into um for december and january for the banks and i i thought it was great because nobody shorts the banks uh because the banks only go up right and there's only certain economic environments in which the banks really pull back and one of those is quantitative tightening and knowing we were going into that environment, I went for it. Now, what we're seeing here in finance is that Credit Suisse has actually jumped up a bit. It's the it's the leader of the pack for the day so far, 2.23% up, where we have things like um, Manhattan Commercial Bank. That's a commercial bank. That's on the list just to... There's a few of these banks here that are commercial banks. They're here to show the difference between how an investment bank might be performing on any given day as opposed to the commercial banks, right? Uh, the commercial banks are ones that uh, actually stand to benefit from interest rates going up because they're mostly, they're the ones that are in the reverse repo program, making sure they've got enough money on hand to pay out the interest um, that is cash on when a client you know, keeps their money in the savings account overnight, they gotta pay an interest. That's a liability to the banks, right? So. When the interest rates go up, they can stand to gain a little bit more. And really, the only reason that is because they have the reverse repo program to fall back on. Otherwise, this entire stock market would have crashed in April of 2021. And we wouldn't even be having this particular discussion because everything that's about to happen would have already been completed by now. And we'd be bullish and we'd be on to the next bull run cycle of maybe five years of that. But... Nope, we got to have a bunch of can kickers here that are just dragging this along and and because they think they can organize a soft landing with um, manufactured numbers. So here we are analyzing the market as it is. Now we see SPY coming right on back up, showing strength at 413.50 right now. That must be in the green. Let's pop on over to Webull, double check right here. Yep, and it's broken past that band of VWAP that you can see up there in the top left. That is bullish for now, and we have 41 minutes left in trading for the day. So let's see what kind of volume we've got. It's a pretty decent amount of volume coming in on these particular candles right here. The range that we would be looking for this to fire up to is all the way up to the 414, where it will most likely bounce off and pull on back. And that's if it doesn't just sit there and consolidate boringly for the next 20 minutes as we roll into the imbalances for the end of the day power hour here. Now, if you guys don't know what the imbalances are, they are a list of stocks that neither either needed to get located and were uh, mislocated or um, need to be uh, reallocated in terms of trading for the day. They're the mistakes. They're the, the fat finger discount uh, mistakes on the trading floor, those type of things. They come in. Sometimes they're very neutral, meaning there's just as many uh, buys as sells sometimes there's a very significant push towards a sell or a buy and if you are thinking about getting into late hour trading you want to know that 10 minutes before there's an imbalance coming in could really give you a boom boom candle or a ding dong candle any any particular time on that given minute and then five minutes later is when those particular trades end up closing and finishing on the on the uh, trading desk on the main floor and so uh, we are 
30 minutes away from imbalances, 40 minutes away from market close right now. And we are Block Rocket Show stopping. I hope everybody be clocking. Drop a little message in there. Give me a like. Let me know how everybody's doing. And if they have any questions, just let me know as well. You know, I take a look at this article right here. I was, I was, I was reading through. Oh, it always does that. That's so funny. Uh, that's a finicky little, little thing that makes that blank out. All right, so I, I, um, there is an amazing YouTube video and breakdown of the PayPal mafia. And so I saw this, what came of the Skype Mafia, right? The people who made Skype sold it to eBay and, and you know, what came of them, Skype being owned by Microsoft right now. I guess I just kind of like got into this a little bit after seeing Zoom. I was like, wow, nobody really talks about Skype anymore. Skype always does everything that Zoom always did. I keep a Skype number um, for the States while I'm here in Costa Rica. And I've had that every year. That way I can make any calls in the United States, have a U.S. number, that type of thing. So I've had Skype for at least 12, 13 years now. And I pay, you know, I think once a year, about 80 bucks to be able to call anybody in the States anytime I want to, have my own number. And I just was kind of curious. But th this story brings me up to one of my favorite stories. And perhaps this is something we could get into in... Um, after hours, maybe we'll have a little viewing party and watch that. But have you ever seen who came out of making PayPal? One of them, you might know him, he's the richest man in the world right now. Um, but there's a really good video about this if you guys ever want to watch it. I, I think we won't sit down and watch it together because it's a little bit off topic for us at this channel. Um, but it looks like there's a wiki. Uh, wiki page for this um, and I think you're going to love this Called the traitorous eight Wait till you see excuse me. Wait till you see what these people at PayPal went on to do with the rest of our internet It's quite amazing All right, so the PayPal Mafia is made up of the group that create were the employees and founders who have since founded and developed additional technology companies. Guess what they've made? Tesla, LinkedIn, Palantir, SpaceX, Affirm, Slide, Kiva, YouTube, Yelp, and Yammer. Yammer, I don't know. But can you believe that? Like, you can see this is a just a blockbuster list so even they didn't even mention reddit uh yishan wong former engineering manager at paypal later worked at facebook and became the ceo of reddit <laughs> how about that you know like we got everything so that's everything right there we've got ebay involved in this we've got reddit involved in this we got um facebook tied in there we have people that are um the the founders fund have you ever heard about this venture capitalist firm? Um, let, let's show you what they've done. And the founders firm, this is YouTube, was built by PayPal people. Um, obviously, Elon's got the Neuralink, OpenAI, The Boring Company, SolarCity, Confinity, Tesla, X.com. His favorite purchase of his entire life was getting X.com, I think. <laughs> He's never been able to properly brand it. <laughs> I think is that what's is that where he has SpaceX now on X.com let's double check we'll bring that up right now okay so while those two little data points are loading um, looking at this I mean these guys are the backbone of the Silicon Valley really uh, PayPal basically built the future of our internet because you know when you think about all the other impacts these things had i, I see it as incredible uh, what a hell of a group all right now i want to show you what founders fund has done let's show you some of the things that they've invested in all right uh founders fund 
uh, something created by the PayPal Mafia, has invested in Airbnb, Lyft, Spotify, Stripe, and Oscar Health. Also was helping out Elon with SpaceX, Palantir, and was one of the earliest investors in Facebook. The firm's partners was Peter Thiel, Ken Howery, and Brian Singerman, and have been founders, early employees, and investors at companies including PayPal, Google, Palantir, and SpaceX. Palantir being one on this list that I think is very significant, but we don't actually quite know why. I think Palantir is going to be a really large and renowned company one day. Oh, it's trying to go to the wiki for x.com. Okay, we don't need that. X.com doesn't have any sight on the Elon. Come on, Baba. All right, well, let's bounce on back to the chats. We still got another 34 minutes left in trading for the day. And you can see we definitely did not head up to the upper band of, of VWAP. And so we haven't had much to trade on since I got started here. I started uh, power hour has been very powerless hour. Powerless and hourless. Let's see. All right. Well, I want to do a little bit of a round the horn. Let's go ahead and check out some of the movers and shakers from this afternoon. See if anything. Starbucks. What is Starbucks? I got to check that out. Starbucks up 209% on the day. Yeah, we got to know about that. Is it, where's, come on, where's the, hmm, why aren't they giving us all the data? I need market cap over here, people. All right, well, it's not giving us market cap right now for some strange reason, and it's not giving me the same. So anyways, let's go ahead, bring up, Starbucks. This could be something you guys know a lot about, but I don't. It's up eight dollars and fifteen cents on the day. That means it was just tangling with penny stock lifestyle. We're gonna zoom out to the daily chat and see what we've got on this baby. She's a, it's an IPO. We're going in on the four hour chat, and we don't have much more than do we even have two days of trading. Nope, just opened up today. All right, so let's find out what Starbucks is, people. This thing ran, oh my god. How's this possible? Hmm. How is it possible that it's up 214% on the day if all we have is just one day of trading and this is the all time low on the chat? Hmm. All right. Let's zoom in. It looks to me like this IPO'd right around the $25, ran up to $45, and now has pulled back. Doing some quick math. Bear with me. Just pulling up a calculator here. I just want to understand this pricing situation going on. We'll go over the profile of what this thing is right now in a minute. It's basically four bucks. It's valuing at four bucks. So I guess it's saying that it IPO'd at four bucks, but they first started trading on the market at 25 bucks. That seems to be the news there. Now going into the profile, this is a, um, it's based in Malaysia. It's a holdings company, so it's a SPAC. Um, it's engaged in building a cash rebate, digital advertising, and payment solution business ecosystem targeting micro, small, and medium enterprises. The company connects retail merchants with retail shoppers to facilitate transactions through cash rebates offered by, you know, it's these fintech type of companies, you know, where there's basically efficient apps that allow payment and e-commerce transactions to happen in these different countries across the world are, um really strong i mean we can see the listing date here is the 23rd so yep we know it is listing today for the first time had a hell of a run i guess they thought it should be four bucks and it's i guess yeah it says previous close four dollars um i think that's just a technicality guys i really do um i think that's just a technical mix miscalculation because we didn't have any action on this yesterday 
So it being valued at four dollars and now being up two hundred and six is a little bit of a well, that's not a little bit. It's it's completely misleading because um, this has actually done nothing but pull back for the majority of the day since its initial IPO run. Um, let's see if there's anything else that really um, throws up a green or a red flag in terms of its subsidiary is Starbucks Holdings. It's a blank check company. Sounds like that's theirs. Um, in terms of news, can't go too far back except for IPOs. Mm -hmm. It priced its initial public offering at 20 million. Um, there's an article right there highlighting that. We'll bring that up right there, but not quite yet. And going back to this news breakdown here. All right, they definitely had some halts earlier in the day. Hit a circuit breaker on IPO, opened at 27 bucks. Halt, 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 halt. This is a trick institutional investors do, right? Because they start out with the shares and if they don't sell <laughs> or if they only sell at high prices, they can drive an IPO like this out of control like crazy they pull out they pull out a lot of premiums from it they make a lot of money off it and then they dump it and that's what happens with these holding companies so actually this one we you know we should actually just have a, a watch list of holdings companies because that's that could actually be really fun on any given day i can think of a lot i might put on that um here why don't we do that Edit watch lists, right? I don't know if you guys can see that right now, but I'm just adding a new watch list. The way you do that in Weeble is you right click over the watch list tab and you sit, click edit watch list, add a new one. This one is SPACs. And we'll call it SPACs. Holding firms aren't always SPACs, but we're just gonna call them that. Right, so we've got that one and anything that's a holdings company that uh, sparks or piques our interest, it's gonna go on this SPAC list because these things are great. You could go and look at the SPAC list on any given day, see something run. See like, so let's see something's running 50%, 75% running up. You got an excellent fade right there because they always fade back down. I can't think of any examples. I'll, I'll look for some, but I can't think of any examples where it didn't fade on back down after a big run up. So um, yeah, as long as you got an options chain, you got action right there. That's a play playlist we need to have. I should have made that earlier. Earlier meaning 2021, when we had record number of SPACs, um, record breaking from 2020. And before that wasn't even close. Um, all part of the quantitative easing and the stimulus from the Federal Reserve counterfeiting or printing money out of thin air uh, gave rise to this wave of SPACs and holding companies coming out. And I think it's really interesting when we're seeing them popping up during this uh, bear market with these crazy runs. Rich just like getting rich, man. They, they see a bear market. And they, they'll find something they can manipulate to make some money. They get bored selling premiums. <laughs> All right, zooming on back. We're getting on to the one minute chat. We've got um, Neptune Wellness, Wind Tree Therapeutics, Indonesia Energy, Reviva Pharmaceuticals, and AVYA, Avaya Holdings, another holdings company running. Uh, we're gonna double check what kind of holdings company we might just get them right over over to the new pay playlist too why the hell not we gotta watch it so it's pre-bit market close was 80 cents now it's run up to 109 this is a a super penny stock digital communications product solutions and services for businesses company operate these write-ups are just so clearly like yeah we we're middlemen that don't do shit, 
but we got money. So call us. <laughs> uh huh. That's what that one looks like to me. So yep, going on the SPAC list. That's kind of like low tier SPAC. You know, that's a penny SPAC. So it's already it probably had its butt kick. Zooming out to the day chart. Oh yeah, look at this thing. Look at this. Well, if you want, it does it have an options chain? It does. I've, I mean, we're at the point where how are you going to change it? You know, how are you going to trade an option on a overlying security is buck. But yeah, yeah, that is heavily manipulated right there. It's actually been running from 70 cents all the way up to a buck 12 over the past two days. What was happening before that? Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. It established so it's it's doubled. It's essentially doubled in one, two, three days. So whether you like this thing or not, I could double your money in three days. Who's gonna argue with that, right? All right, zooming on back to the one minute chart, getting back focused. We have 23 minutes left in trading for the day right now. And I've been pretty happy about all my no trades so far in Power Hour. Um, I, Power Hour is a great time to come together and review um, what's happened during the day um, and help anybody out with any trades that they're stuck in. Uh, you know, where you do get a little bit stuck, it goes against you. And then you're like, all right, I'm going to ride this out. Starts coming back into favor. And uh, for an average day trader, you're just basically trying to clean up, <laughs> clean up any um, any trades that you've done and look into the future as to what you might be doing tomorrow. Um, I'm unless I see some sort of major change from what we have right here, I think we're in this range for at least another day. Um, and that range, let's establish that range for this discussion. Right. I'm going to say it's 411 to 415. All right. Um, I really want to actually give me a little bit of stretchy room on the bottom side. But we're basically going about uh, 2.5 points of the SPY in either direction. That's that standard deviation for the day, um, which is a little bit bigger than what we have on our VWAP bands right now. Uh, but just based on those volume profiles that we take a look over in, in on Fidelity, we looked at those earlier. You can see, I think we're going to be in this range for a bit. Let's see, we're breaking on down from it. Might, if we are in the range, then we might be looking at an awesome opportunity to go long for a little bit of a trade right here. Where, As we approach the bottom band of VWAP, I, we're going to wait for confirmation. Always make sure we're not, and we're going to zoom in on the 15 second shot. We're still we're looking at VWAP, right? And we're going to see if we can get to the lower band of VWAP. If we can, I like that setup. It gives me the opportunity to watch it. It breaks past 412.45. Um, After tapping it, then it's a confirmation that this is uh, still bearish. Um, I'm thinking most likely what we're going to see being VWAP and lower band, we can get down to this 412.45, maybe 412.50 you could call it. Uh, I think it'd be 412.45 and then bounce right off that and we'd have enough room to go from 412.45 up to what would be then 412.84. Less than 50 basis point swing, right? So the only way that risk to reward for you is really going to be all that worth it. If you set an extremely tight stop loss and after a day of trading sideways the way we have, um, there's nothing wrong with that. You're, you're taking a shot at a couple trades before the day ends, but that doesn't necessarily mean you are going to go hog wild for your 100% gain at this point. You know, we're going to need some catalysts. We're going to need some volume, something like that to come in to change the fate of this day. Uh, right now, we can't just keep ourselves... There's not much the average day trader really is going to get out of trading the SPY right now unless you came in at that top at 413.52. I believe that was 
a look at that. That is something we could have played. That is something we could have played. I can't get that level is, is pretty strong. That is something we could have played. One of the things about being the DJ of the stock market for y'all is I'm not always right on point with my levels when I'm making sure I fill you guys in on some other information, right? So I, we might have been... Oof, I wish I hadn't missed that level. Right? I think what I was watching was confirmation of it breaking off VWAP, and then once it did, I didn't see enough of a... Yep. Yeah. That is, and look at us, we're running right on back up right now, right up to, that's basically the 200 candle moving average right there, would be the 215 second moving average. We're going to zoom on out and see if that, how significant that level is. We're actually well above the 200 minute uh, moving average, um, so we're trading in the right direction for uh, bullish sentiment. And yeah, I do think you could get a little trade in there. Let's see where it is. All right, any questions rolling in? Microphone check, is the mic on, people? Boy, it really wants to range out there. All right, well, it's going to give us a moment right now to go back over to Top Losers for the day. Uh, Golden Sun Education We Trade Group. Oh, that's the one we wanted to get onto our holdings list. It's this one here. Wasn't it? No, we trade group was the one that was partnering for that pandemic of monkeypox testing. So that's a different one. No, let's let's get that out. That's don't want that to over on top of the spy. All right, we're gonna go bottom. Excuse me, top right for the top losers as we review them. G Sun, Golden Sun Education. What's going on with this bad boy? Jumping back out right away off the, to the one day chat. Seeing what's going on with this mover. This one has IPO'd on June 22nd, right around the $17 range, let's call it. And this one fired all the way up to 92. So, this is another holdings company. Ah, it is. Principally engaged in the provision of educational services. The company is principally engaged in the provision of non-English foreign languages tutorial services. Like Duolingo type of deal. All right. What's going on the list, people? We're just going to have all these holding companies on this list and just watch them, uh, you know, watch the volatility roll in on any given day. Um, all right. So that was a big loser, right? Big on pullback. You know, another one fit in that narrative. Boy, wouldn't you have liked to fade that? A lot of times these early ones, you might not be able to short it uh, itself and it's not going to have an options chain. So... Um, not all of these are necessarily going to be plays, but there's action, right? And Bright Minds Biosciences down 38.42% on the day. Aspira Women's Health down 38.05 on the day. The guys who got the ticker drug, uh, backed by popular man's Bright Minds Bioscience. And uh, Giga Cloud Tech GCT. This was one we were trading last week, and we had some luck, if I'm not mistaken. Was it last week? When was this opened? On the 18th. Yeah, we, we were playing with it at the end of last week. Actually made a pretty decent percentage on that. On a fade. It was a fade. So let's get that. That's the same one. Giga Cloud Tech. Let me double check. It's a Hong Kong based holding company. Don't you see what, what's going on here? Right?
people with too much stimulus money and just trying to figure out what to do with it. This genius group just keeps coming up, right? We saw this as a big old runner on the 19th last week. Big runner up. Check these things out. So we had MACD convergences. Wow, look at that. That's pretty cool. Um, a new feature of Webull allows you to highlight some, some major indice um, triggers uh, right there. And I really think that's cool. It talks about short-term KST is tenant commodity channel index, uh, triple moving average crossover. It'd be pretty cool if we could start getting some of the scripting into, well, you know, I just, I, I wish we just had trading view tied into Webull and everything else and just everybody used trading view because it's fantastic. It's just trading view isn't tied to any brokers that are, are too popular. So got this genius group gct i mean i guess it's significant that we at least watch these holdings companies because they are super violent and super manipulated i get that one on there yeah i did so it's it's holding companies and biopharma that's what we've got and we've got an old squeezability buddy from last year early in last year asieto holdings down 25.89 percent this was because they did a uh, debt offering and mispriced it by quite a significant amount, and that was uh, that was a fat finger discount right there for anybody who. I mean that that you can't trade something like that. You don't know how what's happening on it till it's done. We're at the one day chart right now, where we see that A L L R alarity is down 24.35 percent. Pet, oh that was that Ryan Cohen, possibly Ryan Cohen C H W stands for Chewy Pet happens to have fired off right after bed and bath and beyond got sold out there's another acquisition company we got to get on the list where is that that's under squeezers we don't want it there we want it under SPACs right Wait a minute. and okay AKLI looks like a that's down 17.48 percent it's a social capital capital Suvreta Holdings Company is a blank check company. Are you st <laughs> are you kidding me? This is just like happening a little too convenient for this particular live stream. It really is. Um, all right, so medical. We could just go down on the. Oh, and we've got Zoom in there. That's a company we actually know. And Bimco Ventures is BBIG. This is another holdings company. It's another SPAC, but they've got low motif. Um, which is Europe's YouTube, I, th I think. No, 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 it's like Europe's Instagram, I believe, or, or yeah, it's Europe's Instagram. I said it was Europe's YouTube, uh, and it's not. It's Europe's Instagram. Forza X1 is a focus on the creation, implementation, and sale of electric boats. They're down 15% on the day. What happened? Was that earnings? Hmm. The partnership five days ago. Sometimes a partnership can mean one partner is going to take on certain liabilities while the other one profits. So you can see a partnership or a merger bringing the share value of one down while it, it raises the other one up. That's the market um, um, trying to price locate where it should be after a uh, big change. Innovative eyewear, Lucy. No news, down 14.69%. Well, they're probably competing with Luxottica in one way or the other, which means they will be thwarted soon enough. All right, so we've got that right there. Uh, I had some data here on Starbucks Holding Group. Uh, let's just bounce over. It was one of the top movers um, from this afternoon. Hindsight production. Nice to see the consistency. Yeah, absolutely. That's the number one key to really like locking down this stream is, uh, you know, getting all my production aspects together and then getting the schedule down and being a part of that schedule, committing to it every single day. Absolutely. Thank you, brother. Thanks for noticing. Oh, shucks. All right. So we got Starbucks right here. Malaysian-based company, Holding Corporation. And it's so they did do a $5 million ordinary share public offering at $4. 
and it fired up. Oh, I see, it's crazy that it fired up like it did. Crazy. Let's see the last little detail here. Network One Financial Securities was involved. Hunter Tubman Fisher, LLC. It's an accounting firm that was involved. Loeb and Loeb, another accounting firm acting as the U.S. counsel to the Network One Financial Securities in connection with the offering. Hmm. Oof, I don't know what to make of that one. Other than I know it's fading it back really soon. It's going to be, have, it's going to be a fade. And... Oh, I apologize. I didn't bring you over to that as I read it, but that's okay. It wasn't too exciting to watch. To be resolved, feeds.dowjones. Yeah, sometimes those feeds break. I've noticed that. They're not always readily available. The remote name is not... Yep, that's it. Feeds breaking. Well, there's not too much I can do about that, is there? I'm not the tech guy. Oh, no, not me, not more. Walking people through how to not lose their password for 14 years, I'm good. <laughs> Everybody loses their password. <laughs> 25 years, we all would deal with passwords. People still lose them. Every day. Crypto's holding strong past couple days. Just kind of consolidating in on that range. Let's see right there. I'm gonna get some hotkeys set up on this so I can bounce between scenes a lot quicker for y'all. All right. Bring us over to Fidelity. See, we've broken down heavily off of that major profile volume right there. I want to bounce us back to the Weeble charts. We've gone over top losers and top gainers. We're on the one-day chart right now. Zooming on into the one-minute chart. That's giving us a lot more detail right now. Imbalances came through and gave us that big ding-dong candle, right? So look at this. I'm going to guess this is the 450 right there. You see that one? See that candle right there? That's the imbalance candle, right? Now it's... One more, one, two more minutes, and this will go through the trading desk. So this is what we tend to see, right? If it's a imbalance to the negative, we'll see this little ding dong come on down. And by the time it's about to hit the trading floor, right? We're on the 15 second chart. That's why we've got so many candles here. But if you even go into the one second chart, you probably have a chance to see that significant volume rolling in. See? See it right there? All at once, right? Right at the one second, all at once, right? So that creates a momentum shift immediately. And every time that happens, there's a momentum shift to it, right? And you need to know what that momentum shift is and where it's going. A lot of times, whatever gap happens will get filled by 30 seconds from now. All right, again, we're on the 15 second chat right now. Brought it back. We just went over the imbalances. We can still it filled the gap from the imbalance. We're going to the floor now where the trades from the imbalance have occurred, reoccurred, go through balancing. Now um, the trade floor confirms, finalizes before the end of day that everything's right there. So if anything hasn't been taken care of in the imbalances at this five minute mark, that will get fi finalized at the end. So usually this five minute till close mark isn't that big of a deal but it can be for the same exact reason if they're having a hard time either locating or um getting a, a a complete fulfillment and and for whatever reason they can't do it through a dark pool at that particular moment you can see a spike up at that five minute but really the big one is to see that 10 minute before market close see if the imbalance is heavy to the sell side or the buy side and then you're going to get this kind of swing it tends up to not be something that you can really play too much for long-term stuff, but what it is is an excellent entry point. If like, let's say um, you're bullish on tomorrow and you wanna you know, grab some faggy diesel 
um, options and gamble that uh, it's going to gap up and fill the gap from two days ago tomorrow. You'd want to do that with an imbalance to the sell side that would give you this opportunity to get a price you really most likely won't get for the rest of the day down there at the 412.16, right? So that's one of the things you want to know about it. It's fit completed. That's completed now. 412.50 is our level um, on the day. And as we wrap up this day, which is about 0.21% down on the day, we're at the lower band of VWAP. We've got four minutes left. And I'm glad we had a really good example of an imbalance. Yesterday's imbalance was not that significant, so it's a little bit harder for you to see it. Uh, but when you get in on that one second chart, you very well can see it. So that's a that's a trading event of the day. Other trading events are like at 1 to 1.30 is when the repo program um, completes, and as well as the reverse repo program in the afternoon. There's a lot of significant volume that can roll in after 1.30 um, or at, well, after 1 o'clock or into 1.30. People used to like to call that just people getting back from lunch. Um, but it wasn't. It was market mechanics. It always has been. Got that Lucy up there, and none of us even know why. So let's switch that up and see how Ape's doing today. I know the AMC's down, but Ape has been up on the day. Let's see if it's a holding. Oh, that's that's not Ape. All right, we're up. 19% um, on the day, and we just had a big boom boom candle right when we landed. Again, we're on the 15 second chart, people. We're at $7.15. Uh, it was previously closing out at $6 yesterday after basically IPOing at roughly seven bucks. So it's uh, regained any territory that it lost from yesterday, and it's been very strong throughout the day. I mean, this is a, a big pullback right here, but the, the level is not, not really that significant. Um, actually, let's measure it out. I think I might be speaking too soon there. I want to measure that one. Indicators. Nope. Drawing tools. Weeble, you got to work on this. Sometimes your drawing tools are there. Sometimes they disappear. All right. Seeing bullish strength coming back in. Um, to the charts for now, we're gonna. It looks like we're gonna end that day right at like 412.76. Look at that. Let's see. 412.57 right now. Or is it gonna just end right on, on the lower band of VWAP? We'll see. Right now, before this market closes, I gotta double check and see if there's any questions from anybody. Ryan Smith is BlackBerry ever going to move and have its day for a meme stock? It hasn't really been volatile the past year compared to the other memes. Yeah, it was kind of left off at the wayside from the from the some of the big squeeze plays that we saw last year. It, it just kind of got forgotten about. Now they have a product they're working on, right? One of the things we always knew BlackBerry was good at was security in their telephones, right? And it should be the ding, 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 ding. No, no, not quite, not quite. We're not closed yet. Um, double checking, yeah, we pulled back quite a, quite a little bit. Still at that um, spy range right there. So let's bring up um, BlackBerry. The only way I think they're gonna start getting any movement is if they, if they start, um, this new product that they are have been trying to work on for a little while it's a partnership i believe there's some aspects of china that are involved with it it's barcoding right now you can see um it's dead yeah it's it's let's do a little research here let's get it to we know the financials aren't so good releases mm, insider trading notes order flow is there and ding 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 i gotta get an official soundboard with a little little ding on that so i'm gonna look into that product um that they're working on uh for you ryan and um we'll get back 
uh, get back to it. If I if I end up talking about it in another live stream, what I'll do is I'll go and I'll clip it off and just uh, leave that clip on the on on my channel, so you'll be able to uh, get your answer. Um, not that that was what you were asking. Yeah, it, BlackBerry's been forgotten about, and and that's from the shorts as well. But I think the shorts kind of understand that there is a, a long-term thesis to to BlackBerry. We just haven't seen it uh, come to fruition. So I'm going to do a little research, double check on what it is on my rusty old brain that I'm forgetting right now. And what we said, what made you pick Weeble over TOS, Tasty Trade, etc.? Hmm, that's a great question. See, like I, I haven't had a good experience with TD Ameritrade at all. So I like Thinkorswim. Um, I've never really used Thinkorswim all that much. Um, we definitely could because I like the Thinkorswim script. And obviously it has paper trading as well, but you can't bounce back and forth between paper trading and live like I can with Weeble. And um, yeah, I, I think actually two things. I mean, TD Ameritrade, um, which offers Think or Swim as its desktop application, which is what he's asking right here. Um, it's a great application. It's super in depth. There is a lot to that program, uh, and it's it's pretty fantastic. Um, Tasty Trade I've never used. I will go and use it. I'll probably open up an account, get one set up, because my motto is more brokerages the better. Um, I, but I've heard a lot about Tasty Trade. Um, I'm I'm old school, right? So I'm doing fine with with uh, Fidelity. I've had my TD Ameritrade account for 15, 16 years, and yeah, I. There's Thinkorswim is good. It is a good tool, uh, but I think it it kind of keeps you within an ecosphere that for me doesn't let, help me bounce around enough. And if I'm gonna look at something ugly, I might as well just stick with the big boy on Fidelity for that. You know, um, TD Ameritrade being one of the largest payment for order flows. Look, what is this boom boom candle we're getting on Amazon? You guys see that? Is that just a stop loss? Wow, there's some some real volatility sneaking into amazon right now it looks like stop loss hunting can you, can you guys see this right here you see what's going on here that's stop loss hunting all right that's a machine that's going through and picking up everybody's limit orders or their stop loss orders and just buying them up all the same time did you guys see that with me that action that's a, that's one of the first time to be able to get that on tape and so and, and sit with you the group on it i think it helped that we're on the 15 second chart to kind of see it Right, but that stop loss hunting is mm, it's a kind of a practice I just I just find I a little bit evil. Um, the guys that made TOS went on to develop the tasty trade after selling the platform. That's cool. Now I'll check this out because I will get into tasty trade myself, but um, how much of the tools that you have in Thinkorswim uh, so the Thinkorswim sold that that tool over um, uh, to TD Ameritrade. Um, if I'm understand, if I know this timeline correctly, and then they went to make Tasty Trade. That is cool. I want to go check it out. I, do they have a scripting language within Tasty Trade? Um, you have your, you know, T I think it's called TOS is the language um, for Thinkorswim, and then with TradingView you have PineScript. That's why I've been working a lot with PineScript, and I think when I finally realized that TOS had a scripting language similar to TradingView, I was already deep engaged in in PineScript for TradingView. And I'd already written a couple of um, strategy testers for back testing one of the strategies I, I call the unicorn. I'll tell you guys about it one of these days. And um, so I think by that point, I just got so heavily involved. And then I saw what TradingView is really working to do. And they're not a brokerage, obviously. It's a platform. But it's their ideas section with your ab ability to post. I mean, I really should be using just TradingView to be honest, if, you know, because TradingView is an excellent place for accountability when you make a call out, right? Anytime I can create an idea on TradingView, that idea is essentially a, 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 a call out that I might want to make. And then you can go back to that in a day or two and you can check it out. You can hit the play button and see, you know, if it played out the same way or if Stock Doctor was wrong. Excellent for accountability. We need more of that. And not a criticism, just curious, since it seems like an unusual choice. I haven't used Tasty Trade, so I can't speak to it. Heard good things, though. You know, I like how Weeble looks. 
and I like how some of their modules um, connect to each other. Weeble is essentially um, uh, a an app that was built on the Apex Clearing uh, module. So Apex Clearing uh, is a, I have a lot to tell you guys about what Apex Clearing is. Essentially, it's the new version of Lehman Brothers. Pause. I'll tell you more. I'll prove it one of these days, but not right now. Um, Apex Clearing being the number one payment for order flow company, the one that works with Citadel, works with Robinhood, is at the as the base foundation for this. Now, um, when I was working with a, a group of people to establish a broker dealer uh, last year, uh, we ended up meeting with Apex Clearing, and I was able to um, sign an NDA and get in on their API. And it's unbelievable, all right? The, like, what they've done with their API at Apex Clearing is so impossible to compete with because what essentially what they've done is let's say you you're going to run a, a front office back office and a client facing portal for a brokerage house you want to you want to start your own edward jones or something like that apex clearing will come in with modules for every single aspect of the back office account receivable receivables um tickers real-time data transfer security like layers of modular modular attachments within the api and you can just create a plug and play brokerage house from apex clearing so i find that incredible um and i will but oh the apex video i've been waiting i've been waiting till i get a, a couple more people watching me to really really break down who apex is for you guys watching right now i'm going to give you a, the short but sweet um just for y'all all right, don't tell anybody because I still got to make more of this. But essentially, Numora Holdings, which is a Japanese-based company, went about buying up a lot of uh, uh, troubled financial firms in 2005-2006. When September 15, 2008 happened, they ended up buying the European and Asian branches of Lehman Brothers after it was dissolved. That was Numora Holdings. In 2017, they bought the State Street Bank Dark Pool and apex clearing which used to be called compu computel or CompuServe, was the initial foundation of the developers that made the api for apex clearing right so numora comes in buys old pieces of lehman throws in a de state street dark pool grabs the engineers from CompuServe. that name is not correct um i'll get the right name and um bottles this under a japanese company named numora and now every time you see numora in the headlines i want you to remember that's lehman brothers 2.0 right there truth is finance as a whole is an incestuous business all right we have um firms right now that will go out of business that have been re-established over the years because they went out of business previously because they cheated a bunch of people had to change the name Right? That's all we really are, is a bunch of people changing our names and going to work doing the same bullshit at a new place. That's the finance as a whole. So if I were to go back deeper and darker and further into Numura, we'd start seeing um, some of that economic warfare we have between the Western powers of currency. So Japan was one that decided to go in the opposite direction of us in Europe. Right? They decided to hyperinflate their currency and ride the tide because they still could piggyback off us and um in in just basically um um uh, insource our inflation because it looked a lot better than their hyperinflation so um there has been so much trickery and fuckery going on wow i didn't think lehman's corpse was still knocking around it is man you'd be so surprised um it's not the only way that when i tell this story i want to tell you guys about my experiences in what within finance like uh one of the stories um that i thought was extremely ironic in terms of uh, the incestuous nature of, of finance right the first firm i ever worked at was putnam investments and the second firm i worked at was manulife financial uh the hr representative that hired me two years earlier at putnam was at manulife financial sat down in the interview with me when i was at manual Fi life financial I, applying for that job she goes oh i've already hired you at the last place you're great come on in hires me at that job too um so that kind of tells you a little bit about how it is. And I worked at seven different finance firms during my six, six and a half year uh, career in finance. And that tells you a little bit more, right? Seven different firms over the six year period of time. And I was a uh, mover and a shaker. 
right? Um, some of those were were temps because right, right right around 06, you know, like like that's when I was working for like Fidelity or a couple other things that were like temp jobs because the market was so dead that even highly highly skilled fund accountants, traders, and stuff were sitting there like like the the way finance was so weak at that point. Like they wouldn't take anyone on other than temps. They just wanted to be able to get rid of you as quick as possible as they came up. So that was when I started moving on from finance because I was like, well, you know, I, it, it, you've, you've raised me up to be this kind of guy in finance who understands this certain level. Then you, those jobs pull back and here I am ready to, uh, you know, to, to continue to grow my career. Um, but finance as a whole, there was no jobs available that way. So then you go, okay, all right, cool. Well, two years ago, I did this other job. I was dope at it. I got a bunch of uh, pay raises that moved me into this direction with it. And they're like, nope, nope, you're, you're overqualified for that now, sir. I know you did that job. You were great at that job. You did that job at this company, but now you're overqualified because for a year you've been doing this other job at the same firm, right? And that, that I just found that to be bullshit, you know, for real. All right, cool. So we got um, a bunch of good stuff going in. Thanks for checking it out, Ryan. Yeah, I, I can't wait. I can, really, this is my favorite juicy subject. And um, I just want to really, really like break it down for y'all. But I gave you the short and sweet and it's it's true. It's, uh, it's all true from there. I just, I have to lay it out. It has to have all the DD. It has to have everything. And it's probably not going to be on a live stream. Uh, because I'd like to have that to be the type of video that people will come back and review over and over again, not wasting too much time, not skipping through details, and having all the materials right up front. Uh, but yeah, we got a lot more to talk about. I can't wait to. Thanks for the tasty trade. That's what I'm. Uh, I'm gonna look into that right after um, we get off this live stream, which I have to cut it short today, unfortunately, guys. So we're only, I think, only an hour and fifteen, just under an hour and fifteen minutes into this and i have to cut it short unfortunately today so right now i'm going to stick on this stream for another three to four minutes make sure i answer any last questions that you got for today uh the next time you're going to see me is tomorrow morning around 6 30 eastern standard time oh excuse me no it's 8 30 eastern standard time 6 30 my time down here in costa rica <laughs> try to keep that straight but no matter what with my videos, you're always going to have a timestamp on everything on my video. That's one of my goals is that you always have a timestamp. And always when I'm quoting prices, I'm always going to timestamp them as well. It's very important to making sure that misinformation doesn't get out there. Freaking saying there was no in, intrinsic value or inherent value in Ape yesterday. That guy, tell you what, I really, I really, you know what? I don't like toxic environments. I don't want a bunch of YouTubers sitting around arguing about other YouTubers' opinion, whether they're right, wrong, or sideways about anything. I, I don't care about that type of environment. I just want us all to build a community and understand all we're doing right now is arguing whether this fucking thing is going to go up, down, or sideways. And that's all this discussion really is. So I don't think there's any point to really attack other YouTubers, except name one, misinformation. If you, if you, you're going to really tick me off if you misinform Anybody that might be a potential subscriber for me, or even their own potential subscribers, you're going to hear from me. Misinformation is the number one issue in mainstream narrative media, and it drives the markets in such a way that retail investors are the ones that lose while the institutions gain. And so I do not stand for misinformation. That's one time you're going to really piss me off. If me, Kevin keeps it up, he's going to get a full, full stock doctor ear. And, and I'm not going to hold back on it. I'm not going to be toxic to him. I'm not going to attack him for his opinion or anything like that. It's about information. You get the information right the first time or you get fired. That's how I learned. <laughs> That's how I learned in finance. You don't, you don't screw that up. You don't, make, you don't mislead anybody ever. Or you don't have any job in this business. You don't have any business in economics or finance at all. I rock, I rock. Calm, calm down, calm down. There's a lot of people out there that are gonna gonna work that get paid to mislead, and I'm not even really that mad about them. But I will do shillionaire reports and break it down. You can see I broke down um, in May what Jamie Dimon was doing with his narrative. If you want to go on back, I wasn't as good at making videos then. I'm getting better incrementally. So um, some of these subjects it might be a little bit kind of uh, kind of painful to get through that video, um, but. Yeah, that's right. Pushing that, that border, boulder up the hill. That's right. 
you know, grind. That's the grind. And if you really want to make something of your life and have something within your dreams that you can reach for, you're going to have to grind to get there. I don't know any other way, you know, unless you get uh, a gift from a rich family and you're born into something like that, you inherit it. You're going to have to grind for it. And there's nothing wrong with the grind because you meet some amazing people along the way on the grind and they're trying to push their boulder, boulder up their hill too. And sometimes you can give them a hand. Sometimes they can give you a hand. That's what we're here to do, people. All right, so rock on. I'm not seeing any more questions rolling in quite yet. I'm going to give you guys just another minute here to make sure you get any questions done uh, before the end of the day. Um, I'm always at least reviewing comments, right? So, like, you guys can just pop on to probably any of my more recent videos anytime. If you're stuck with something in finance or you're not sure what's going on, just jump on to one of my videos and throw in a comment. Hey, stock doctor, if I've got the time or the bandwidth, I'll answer it right there in the comment stream. If I have to bring it over to a live chat and chat about it because I've got a long list of questions to answer, then I'll do that too. But I'll make sure everything gets answered. That's my job. Quality of vids doing much better for sure. Thank you, Nettle member. I appreciate that. But I've got many more levels to go. Many more levels to go. And part of this is just getting comfortable with it. Just kind of getting used to the flow, making sure that you're getting the information out to the people on time and in an effective way. Right? I want you to be able to make money off the information I'm going to provide to you. And um, it's not financial advice. It's guidance and information. And don't worry. I'm not worried about that financial advice piece. That's a that's for somebody who's never been licensed before. I mean, I know exactly how to talk to you so you don't have to worry about me giving you financial advice. I'm paper trading over here. You make the decision. I'm just here to give you the levels, the information, so that you have yourself... Your online stock DJ slash online customer service finance representative. I don't mind that, really. I did a lot of cool jobs in, in finance, but the funnest job I had was talking on the phones every day to brokers. I loved it. I loved it. I, I, I'd get like 80, 90 calls a day just rapping with brokers. They didn't put their trades for the day. I'd ask them like what it was like with their clients. They'd tell me this story about this client, pissed off by, about this particular thing, pissed off by that little thing. Like, I love that job. And I love this one too, right? I think I see a lot of similarities with it. So like, just, just know you've got a guy now. You got a guy. And this guy, if he doesn't know the answer, he's going to go get you the answer. Because I like to. I like doing that. All right, beautiful people. So thank you so much for uh, tuning in with us on this uh, fantastic Power Hour, August 23rd, 2022. And I will see you, beautiful humans, tomorrow. All right, rock on. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. That's right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. That's right. For the record, live on me going all the way. All the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. Stop. For the record.